Today is special, right? I know that uh, you circled it on your calendars and you planned and you prepared for it. You made the special arrangements, maybe reservations, but you put some time and effort into getting ready for today because today is a special day. Transfiguration Sunday, right? No, not where you thought I was going with that. It is also another special day today. It's Valentine's Day, right? It falls on a Sunday, which gives us opportunity to actually talk about it here a little bit. And Valentine's Day, it's a day that we really set aside. And, and maybe there's some cynics out there who think that it's made up by the greeting card companies or the florist or the chocolatiers. But I think that we all kind of enjoy having Valentine's Day because maybe it's a reminder for us that we do want to show love to those people. We want to make it clear to those people that we deeply care about and who deeply care about us that we love them. And if, if you put all those time and that energy, if, if I can ask you a question for whom or, or whose valentine, for whose valentine did you spend the most time and the most effort? Whose valentine cost you the most? Maybe not financially, maybe not the amount of money that you needed to spend on it, but maybe because of the time and the energy and maybe some of the things that you needed to sacrifice on your agenda, but you are willing to do it because this person, they mean that much to you. And whether you answered with your spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, whoever it was that was in your mind, it was your children or maybe your parents or a friend or a teacher, but whoever it was, the reason that you put that time and that effort and that energy into the gift that you wanted to give them, the arrangements that you made, it's because you truly want that person to know and to understand how much you love them. And I think that Transfiguration Sunday does that for us. Is it too cheesy if I say that Transfiguration Sunday is Jesus Valentine to you? Is that like, you know, like run me out of here? Because I, I, it's a little cheesy, but I want you to think about that. And as we look at the Transfiguration today, I want you to be able to see not only Jesus in his amazing, spectacular glory, but as we view the Transfiguration, that you are also going to see the tremendous love that your God has for you. A love that is full of effort and energy and planning and sacrifice. And so we have this majestic, glorious experience that those disciples got to see. Jesus took some of his closest companions, Peter, James, and John, and he takes them up to this mountain to have this experience and to see him in divine glory. It took place about six days after Jesus had had a very candid conversation with those friends of his about what his life was going to look like moving forward and what the life of anyone who wanted to follow after him needed to look like moving forward. And so Jesus, he told them that he was going to have to suffer and die. And that anyone who wanted to follow him, they too, they were going to have to pick up crosses in their life, burdens, difficulties, and they were going to have to carry those in order to follow Jesus. And so six days later, Jesus takes these closest companions of him, kind of the inner circle of those friends of Jesus. He takes them to this remote mountaintop, and we have this experience. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. 
And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. What an incredible experience. I mean, this just came take place several days after Jesus had asked the disciples who they said that he was. And, and as they gave answers from all the different people, he said, no, I, I want to know who you say that I am. And Peter said, you are the Christ, the chosen one, the son of the living God. And then they see Jesus revealed in this gleaming bright white light, dazzling in divine glory and splendor. And there could be no doubt in their minds that Peter had been right. And you have the the present power and the proof of the resurrection from the dead in Moses and Elijah who are standing there conversing with Jesus on this mountain. And so Peter responds to this majestic experience, and he says, it is good for us to be here. And what do you think about that? What made it so good for them to be there? What was so good about being in the presence of this divine glory and majesty. I think that's something that maybe Valentine's Day can help us out with a little bit. Because Valentine's Day reminds us that it is good to be with those that we love and those who love us. It is good to be with them, to stand in their presence, to enjoy time with them. And if we are separated, if there's distance between us, whether that's, from, that's time or space, but that separation makes it even harder to show love and to know love. And we have technology that helps us with that, and we can be incredibly thankful for that. But I think we all understand that it is so much better, so good to be with the people we love and the people who love us. And one of the the best parts of a really deep, truly loving relationship that we can enjoy is that opportunity to be with people and be free to be who you are. No, just be authentically you and, and free from fear and shame to be there in their presence with them unafraid and unashamed. Do you have that? In your relationship with God? I think that's a a tension that we feel a little bit. Yes, it's good to be in God's presence, but can we stand there unafraid and unashamed? Peter said, Lord, it's good for us to be here, but then we hear that the disciples, they were terrified. And it's a tension that we feel, they felt it on that mountaintop, and we feel it too. As much as we would love to be in God's presence, if we were in his presence, and that unveiled, completely revealed divine glory and majesty, that that blazing white, gleaming bright light, we would not be able to stand there unafraid and unashamed. Because that that gleaming bright white light of divine perfection and righteousness, it would expose the darkness of our own hearts. It would expose the cracks and the fault lines running through our life. In that gleaming bright white light, the darkness of our shame would take on an even deeper shade, wouldn't it? 
The darkness that is there for every single time that we fail to truly love both God and neighbor. For every single time that we calculated the cost of love and we estimated that it was far too high and so we passed. For every single time that we evaluated the investment that it would take to love somebody and then we stepped back because the return wasn't going to be good enough. For every single time that we fail to make the sacrifice that love truly called for. For every single time that we traded love for hatred or abuse or anger. All of that would be exposed. It would be exposed by God's holiness and perfection. And we would be terrified. Which is exactly why you need to stand here and you need to see this transfiguration experience. You need to see Jesus in his glory and you have to hear what takes place there because here at his transfiguration you see God's tremendous love for you. A love that that washes over your shame and your fear. A love that covers you in forgiveness. And here you see the tremendous nature of that love because you see its plan and you see the effort that it took and you, and you see the sacrifice, you see the incredible gift that this love is for you. When the disciples were terrified, there was a cloud that, that covered over them and then this voice rang out from the cloud and said, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. God, the Heavenly Father, declared that Peter was right. This was his own son. And in that declaration, you see God's plan. The plan behind his love. The plan to send his one and only son to this world. His plan that His one and only Son would become our Savior. And then as He explicitly expressed His love and His approval for His Son, you see the effort that went into that love. Jesus' love for you because Jesus was the perfect Son. Perfectly obedient perfectly righteous. He lived a perfect life. Every single ounce of his effort went into that righteous life that he lived for you. And you also see Jesus' tremendous humility and his sacrifice. You see that tremendous humility and sacrifice as you recognize that as the very Son of God, part of the divine Godhead, Jesus had objective glory. Simply by being God's Son, He was glorious. He had this glory. It was an objective fact of His glory, and He simply showed it to His disciples there. But Jesus stepped aside from that glory. He traded that objective glory that he had and instead he pursued a subjective glory, a a glory that he chose, the glory that he found in loving you, the glory that he found in coming down from that Mount of Transfiguration because he could have stayed. He could have stayed there in that dazzling white, gleaming glory, shining his glory for all the world to see. He could have ruled over this world and he could have passed his divine, just judgments in that glorified state. But instead, he came down from that mountain. He came down from that mountain to climb another mountain. This one called Calvary. And there, 
He would not be glorified, but he would be humiliated. There, he he would not shine with this radiant, gleaming white light. His clothes would not become whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them, but instead they would be stripped away from him. His body would not be present in its radiance, shining this white light, but instead it would give off the dark hues of black and blue from the beatings that he had received. And the streaks of red from the whippings and his pierced hands and the thorns that crushed into his skull. There he would not hear out the cries of affirmation and joy and love, but instead he would hear the cries of mockery and insult and hate. In fact, the voice of his heavenly father, it would be eerily absent when his own son cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There would be no cloud that would come and and would hide him from the sight, but instead Jesus would be hoisted up on display for the entire world to see. And yet what would truly be on display was his tremendous love. His tremendous love for you and for me. For in that sacrifice, in climbing that other mountain, in going to the cross, your soul was washed clean. Your soul was made whiter, was better than anyone in the world could ever bleach it because it was covered in the blood of Jesus. God's own Son sent for you. Your guilt and your shame would be covered and fully forgiven on that mountain. All so that you would be able to stand in God's presence unafraid and unashamed. That you know that you can be fully and completely and authentically you in God's presence, in the presence of his holiness, because you know that also not only in that cleansing and that washing, but that God has remade you to be his own dear child whom he loves. I know how much I don't deserve to be there. I don't deserve to be in the presence of my holy God. I don't deserve to climb that mountain with Jesus and see his glory. I don't deserve to know God's love the way that I do, but I also know that I am blessed to know that love. I'm blessed to know the kind of love that Jesus showed, the the love that took a plan and it took effort and took sacrifice and humility as Jesus set aside his glory for me. And he did it for you too. And you can know it and you, you can have that confidence because of what you see on not only the Mount of Transfiguration, but also the Mount of his crucifixion. You can have that confidence that you too can stand in God's presence unafraid and unashamed. And you can have that confidence because you know That all of this, this plan that God made, all the time and the effort and the energy he put into it, you know that it was fulfilled. I had an awesome plan for Valentine's Day today. It was going to be amazing. I was going to wow my wife. I really was. And I had it all set up. And and maybe some of you know this. uh, When you're married... And especially if you tend to work in the same place that your spouse works. And so you kind of know like every single moment of your days usually. It can be really hard to surprise someone. But I had it all figured out. See, Thursday the academy didn't have school. I was taking one of our vehicles to get an oil change early in the morning right away first thing. And that was my window. I had the time to go run all my errands, get all the things that I needed to get for today. I would be planned. I'd be prepared. I would be ready. 
but the really long piece of sharp metal lying on the road that targeted the driver's side rear tire on my vehicle had a different plan in mind. And so after spending the time in the cold weather and the rain, changing a flat tire and getting it figured out where I could go and where I could get, do I need to get it fixed? Do I need to get a replacement? Yes, and $156 later to replace the tire. And my day was shot. And so was my plan for Valentine's. And on top of it, what I ordered from Amazon Prime, two-day delivery, come on, not here yet. My plan was thrown off and ruined, but not God's plan. You know, Jesus knew that God's plan would be fulfilled. As they were coming down from that mountain, he said to his disciples, he said this, he gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Jesus knew that greater things were coming. He knew that God's plan would be carried out, that it would be fulfilled. He wasn't going to take a wrong turn. Nothing could stop him, not even the sharp attacks of Satan aimed right against his own heart and soul. Nothing would stop God's plan from being fulfilled. Jesus knew that, yes, he would give up his life. He would suffer hell on the cross for the people he loved, for you and me But he also knew that he would rise in a glorious resurrection for the dead to seal everything that he had done for us. To seal his tremendous love for you. And so I pray that today on this special day, Transfiguration Sunday, you can see the tremendous love of God for you. A love that was planned, a love that took effort and time and energy and sacrifice. A love that was fulfilled. And as you see this tremendous love, that as you look at the transfiguration, you not only see the tremendous glory of Jesus, but also his tremendous love as he came down from that mountain for you. Amen. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.